Hi everybody, we are going to get started on our Romero Brito inspired art project for today. And here are the things you're going to need. You're going to need crayons and markers, a pencil. If you can go out and get a leaf from your yard, that would be very helpful. If you have watercolors, you can use watercolors also. If you don't have watercolors, that's fine. You don't need them. You can do the project without it. So for the first part of this project, you're going to need a big leaf. And hopefully you were able to go outside and find a big leaf. I'm sure they're still blowing around. I've got thousands in my yard. If you have a nice big leaf, you can just hold it on your paper and trace. But if you weren't able to find a big leaf, we're just going to draw it nice and big. So I'm going to look at my leaf and I'm going to start at the top of it and I see these two angles right here. It kind of looks like a letter V on each side. So I'm going to start drawing my leaf by drawing a letter V on the left side and the right side. Up at the top, I see some points. I think my leaf probably had a point at the top too, but probably just lost it. Oh, I better move that point over just a little bit. So I'm just looking at the lines of the leaf as I draw. So I'm going to come down the right side here, and I see that it has a little point sticking out and then a big point. I'm right here on this point and I've got to come down quite a ways and now I'm going to start curving out. You can see that I am drawing bigger than my leaf. See how I've drawn this shape over here and my drawing is bigger. So if you weren't able to trace make sure that you are drawing larger than your leaf. So now I'm coming down this line right here. And I've got one more point on the right side. Make sure you can see all the way down to the bottom of my paper. Okay, I'm going to go back up here to the top and I'm going to work on this side over here, the left side. I see that the point of that side is just about as tall. Let's see, I think I need to go a little bit wider. And I'm coming down to another corner. And last one. All the way down here at the bottom. Okay. So you can see it's pretty similar to the leaf that I was looking at. I'm going to divide my leaf up using the veins. So I'm looking at these veins and I notice there's a big one going down the middle of the leaf from the stem. So I'm going to start right there. Alright, I've got one coming off and it just kind of curves off of that main vein. 
It's a little bit smaller than that main vein. I've got another one that gently curves off. Do you notice how the veins of the leaf look very similar to the trunk and the branches on a tree? I'm going to finish those all the way out to the tip with just a line. And I am just about done drawing my leaf. Now if you traced, you're also going to want to draw the veins onto the leaf that you traced. So now we have all these different sections that we'll be able to decorate with dots, lines, uh, squiggles, zigzags, all those different patterns that Romero Burton used. So if you plan on using watercolor, you are probably going to want to outline with crayon so that the crayon can help hold the colors apart. Romero Brito used black outlines in his, or uses black outlines in his artwork a lot to separate out the different colors. So if you begin with your crayon, just stay on your line. Try and press medium hard so that you're making a nice wall as you outline. If you are not planning on using watercolor, you can outline with marker or crayon. Either one will work. You can use a variety of colors if you want, or you can stick to black. It's certainly your choice. All right, if you are using crayons and markers, what I would do is I would start out with a light color for the base of my section. We're gonna make a different pattern with different colors in each section of our leaf, just like Romero Britton did with all of, Brito did with all of his artwork. So I'm gonna choose a lighter color. And first I'm just gonna go around the edge of the section because I don't want my crayon to mix with the black very much, I'm just going right along the edge of my black outline. And then I'm going to color in the middle. When I color in the middle of the shape, I'm trying to color in one direction. And I'm, not, I'm trying not to leave any white spots. So... I am keeping my movement short and finishing one area and then scooting down. Now I can take a darker color and I can make my pattern right on top of that nice bright green color. So I can think of whatever pattern I want. And because I have a darker color, I can go right on top. Now, of course, I could use more than one color if I wanted to. I could use other dark colors, too. Here's a purple. So I just used a blue before. And I'm going to think of a different pattern for each section of my leaf.
So here I've got my little swirls. And I'm going to do every section and I'll show you that here in a minute. But I can also do the background if I want. So if I wanted to use cool colors on the leaf, like blues, violets, and greens, I could use warm colors in the background. Or you could do it opposite and do warm colors here and cool colors out here, like, um, or warm colors on the leaf, like red, orange, yellow, and do your cool colors out there. That's up to you. Or maybe you just want to mix it up and use warm and cool colors. And then you can also decorate your background if you want. So I think I'm going to add a few lines to make different shapes in my background. So I'll have several sections that I can color. Kind of do these little broken lines. It's almost going to look like stained glass, I think. So if you want to use watercolor, what I would do first is I would start with my crayon and make my design with my crayon, my pattern. Now I can go in with my watercolor if I'm doing watercolor, if you're not doing watercolor, don't worry about this. I can wet the area first. And I'm making sure to stay inside my black lines, but it's okay if I paint right over top of my polka dots and my squiggles because they are made with wax and the paint will not be able to stick to them. So I'm going to wet my paint. I've got to decide on a color. I'm going to do violet. So I put a little bit of water on my violet paint. I'm going to start out with just a little bit on my brush and you can see how easily that spreads out. I don't have to worry about painting around my crayon. As long as it's nice and wet, the paint should not stick to the wax. If you are going to use marker, and of course you can use a combination of all three just like I am, if you're going to use marker, you may want to do larger patterns because it's going to be a little bit more difficult to color around your shapes. So I'm going to do some very large polka dots. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to fill in the white space with a different color. So I don't want to color over my green with my purple. Kind of makes a funky gray color. I'm just going to outline my polka dots. And because I just did large polka dots, pretty easy to outline around them. And then I can go in and color the section.
Feel free to be as creative as you want with your patterns. Uh, make sure you go back and look at some of Romero Brito's artwork. And take your time and have fun with it. Lots of color. All right, I have finished my leaf and I am ready to move on to my background. You can see on my leaf I did crayon, I did crayon and marker, I did crayon and watercolor, I did just marker. So there's plenty of variety. Use the art materials that you have around your house, whatever you have around. So I'm going to start working in my background and I used all cool colors for my leaf. And I think I'm going to use warm colors on my background to see if I can really make this leaf pop out. 